Hello and welcome to this Corgi Engine tutorial. I'm Renault and today I'm going to talk about UI in the Corgi Engine. So while it's primarily focused on gameplay, uh, the Corgi Engine includes quite a bunch of AI elements, uh, UI elements that will help communicate with the player. For example, here when I take damage, I've got my health bar in the top left corner that will tell me you know, how damaged uh, my character is. There's also here uh, a jetpack bar, and if I press pause, you see this uh, pause screen. There are quite a bunch of, uh, of elements, of UI elements like that, that will be displayed. Um, for example, if I move uh, to a next level, you see that uh, the screen fades to black. Uh, that's also part of the UI. So if I go back to my scene, uh, and that will be the case for uh, most scenes in the Corgi engine you will have two cameras. Uh, the first one is the main camera It's the one that displays the action and uh, as you can see in the camera preview it only renders You know platforms background uh, your characters uh, stuff like that. There's also a UI camera It's usually positioned outside of the scene uh, just for convenience, but you can really position it uh, anywhere it doesn't change anything and it contains uh, a lot of stuff. It contains a canvas element, and inside that canvas element uh, will be the HUD, will be uh, the fader that we saw earlier on, uh, the mobile controls, uh, will have the post splash, so I can activate it. Uh, most of these FPS counters, stuff like that, uh, most of these are turned off most of the time, and when you press uh, like escape, uh, you'll have the post screen. All of these uh, elements inside the UI camera are controlled by a script called the GUI Manager. So if we open it, uh, you'll see that it's mostly uh, references to all the parts that make uh, the UI. So you have the buttons, you have the pull screen, the jetpack bar, and so on. And then it's a bunch of methods that can be called from anywhere uh, as it's a uh, single ton. And, uh, you can call it from anywhere in the engine, any of your custom classes and so on. And you can have uh, options to set the HUD active or not, uh, set the avatar active or not. Uh, same for mobile controls. So it's really uh, only switches uh, to turn these elements on and off and to refresh them. Like here, you can refresh the points, you can update the health bar, you can update the jetpack bar. These are called every time you uh, consume your fuel, your jetpack fuel, or when you lose or gain health, uh, you can change the level name that is displayed in the top right corner, and really stuff like that. that so that's that's what the GUI manager does. Of course, you can uh, easily modify uh, the appearance of the UI. So, uh, for example, you can obviously reposition stuff, so you can decide to move. Uh, for example, your avatar here, and uh, if you press play, you'll see that, uh, of course, uh, your avatar has changed position. You could decide to add uh, new images to it too, or, or change uh, the avatar, for example. So uh, here, the avatar is made of two parts, so I have the head and the background. I can decide uh, to get rid of one of these, for example, the head, and I can change the background to know whatever I want so uh, uh, yeah this, this plant is, is really nice so now I have a plant on my health bar um, I can also change for example uh, the font and so um, by default it, it will uh, result to this uh, Gotham ultra font but uh, if you have you know other fonts into your folder you can have that so uh, let's go for a more retro look and uh, if I press play you'll see that my my points are now you know rendered with this pixely font it works just fine so really everything you see in uh, the UI you can modify you can position elsewhere you can you can also add stuff you've seen how it's done using the GUI manager so you can extend it, modify it uh, to add your new methods and new references. 
The same goes, of course, for all the elements of the UI. So for example, the pose splash, if you want to modify it, uh, you can change uh, its color, make it red, for example, and you can decide that uh, you don't want a restart level button and uh, you want your back to level selection to be here, your resume button to be here. And uh, once you're done, you just uh, put things back like you found them. Uh, press play and if you uh, go into your game press pause you'll see that uh, the buttons are now like we, we set them um, so that's that's basically how you change things uh, inside the UI the last thing we want to see are the dialog boxes so if I start my level again and bring in the game view you'll see that at the start of the this is the, the mountains level uh, there's this kind of robot corgi and if i press uh, space uh, it starts talking to me this is done using uh, the dialogue zone system that is uh, uh, specific to the corgi engine and um, let's see how you can customize it so it's really uh, a very simple uh, and, and basic uh, dialogue system uh, let's find our heavy corgi guy as you can see uh, position just next to it is a dialogue zone uh, it's a really simple dialogue system that will allow you to display one-way dialogues so you cannot uh, speak back it can be dialogues it can be tooltips any way you want in your levels uh, to use it all you need is this zone uh, a zone is determined by a box collider 2d and all you have to do then uh, is add a dialogue zone script. They can be attached to a character. Uh, for example, I could nest it under my heavy corgi. So wherever it goes, well, this one doesn't move, but uh, you will have example in the Misa one, uh, since there's one character that moves um, along with his dialogue zone. Um, so just, just, you know, nest it under the hierarchy. Uh, once it's been added, to your zone, the dialogue zone component, uh, all you have to do is really uh, set it up using the inspector. It's kind of uh, self-explanatory, but there are a number of activation related checkboxes that will allow you to decide how and when the dialogue can be activated. You can also decide to show a prompt. Uh, so by default, it will show a small AI icon, but you can change it, of course. Uh, feel free to replace it with, with whatever you want. Uh, then you can change the, the dialog box uh, look. So uh, for example here I can set it to, uh, to blue and have the text color be a nice yellow. I could change uh, the text font by default it will take, uh, I'm not sure what it's called, but just forgot, but uh, you can change the uh, text size. You can change the alignment, for example by default it's middle center, but uh, we could have upper left. Um, we can have it uh, fade uh, slower, so 0.5 and transition time 0.5. Uh, distance from top, uh, so that's the position between uh, the top and uh, of, of our zone and the operation of the box. You can have the player being able to move while talking or not and uh, you can decide if it's button handled or if it's not button handled you can decide a message duration uh, in, in this case it will be automatic so uh, let's try that it's not button handled you can move while talking and each message will last for uh, three seconds you can decide also if it's uh, activable more than once so uh, every time you will move into the zone and activate a button um, it will uh, trigger something and here we can change the text so uh, it's really just an array uh, you say that you have five elements uh, let's put it just to two and uh, so we'll put in oh this is a tutorial and uh, here we'll say about text and dialogues so if I press play again and bring in my little character I go into the zone and now I just don't press anything and as you can see uh, the character uh, can still move while uh, 
I should have done a better demonstration than that. Oh, I'll just do it again. So I arrive into my scene. I can still move. Uh, the dialogue will continue without me. And yeah, that's pretty much all there is to know about. So uh, the last thing I wanted to talk about are health bars uh, and progress bars in general in the, the Corgi engine. So uh, for the sake of the demonstration, I'm gonna change the health of this robot to 200. If I press play again, uh, here's my robot. And if I try to shoot at it, you see that I get visual feedback, the sprite flickers, I get an explosion, but I'm not sure exactly how much health it has left. Uh, fortunately, the Corgi engine comes with a solution for that. So all I have to do is add a new component, uh, search for health bar. And here I can do a bunch of tweaks as usual. So I can choose uh, maybe a prefab based health bar. So I would have to um, set up here a prefab that is of the progress bar class or as a progress bar component itself. But I'm, I'm going to go for a drawn one. Um, basically a drawn one will be two rectangles, one uh, with a foreground color. So I'm going to go for a, a light blue, maybe a yellow, maybe a yellow. And um, a dark blue in the back, or dark, dark violet, so it gets, well, it's going to be ugly. Um, I can change the size and I can change the offset, so that's um, the offset that will be applied to the bar. By default, it would be positioned at the center of the object, so I want it around here. I'm gonna add like one, one unity unit. I'm gonna say it's always visible. So if I press play, uh, you'll see that it gets it get drawn automatically. And uh, if I move here and start shooting at my enemy robot, I'm damaging it little by little, and. Um, as you can see, it now has like uh, only a third of its health left. And if I keep shooting and keep shooting, maybe it will give me. All oh, right, I did it. I killed it. Um, of course, I can make uh, some tweaks. I can change uh, the size so I can make it twice as big and really big. And it's going to be a big square. And it's going to be ugly, but it's still <laughs> still is working. Uh, maybe 0.5. So yeah, I've got this big yellow health bar. I can change the colors. I can also decide that it's not always visible, but only on hit. So uh, for now, I'd say that it only displays for two seconds when I hit it. And if I go back here, one, two, and there you go. I'm really bad at counting seconds, but uh, that's how you set up health bars in the Corgi engine. It also comes with a progress bar class that will allow you to do uh, basically the same thing but uh, uh, in a more you know sophisc sophisticated way uh, that's for example how uh, this uh, health bar uh, works the, um, the GUI one so it uses uh, this progress bar class that's something that you can use also for enemies and uh, all you need to specify is an object uh, it has to be like a rectangle or whatever and uh, say that it's um, it's then bound and that object will be resized instead of just having uh, a flat surface drawn that's pretty much all you need to know about UI in the Corgi engine uh, I hope you learned something new today and uh, see you next time bye